Are you saying there's something that I don't have? <laughs> well, I've been a leader in the church for 20 years. Well, if you feel offended and angry that I would say that, it's for sure you haven't received the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Because if you have received the Holy Spirit, you would say yes. Yes, refresh me in that. Remind me of the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. Because all of us as a humans, have humans have a tendency to go back on our own strength. 왜냐하면 사람들은 늘 어, 자기를 의지하려고 하는 그런 쪽으로 늘 다시 돌아가는 그런 습성이 있기 And we need to constantly be reminded to say no to that. 그래서 늘 우리가 어, 그 사실을 알고 어, 그것을 늘 새롭게 시작을 Jesus said no. 예수께서 아니 Paul said no. 어, 바울도 no라고 했 Jesus said I do nothing on my own. Even Jesus said, I have nothing good in myself. Paul said, I don't live my own life. So we have to say no to that humanistic effort. And then we have to say yes to the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the Father shows me what to do. Paul said, "The life I now live is Jesus living through me." Jesus said, "Wait, and you will receive the Holy Spirit come inside of you." Jesus said, "When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll have power coming through." And he said, "As the Holy Spirit and His power comes through you." Then you'll be able to do what I'm talking to you about. You cannot do the work of God on your on human strength. Well, maybe a little bit. No, Jesus said nothing. Nothing. He said, "You have to be able to trust in Him." I'm reminded about the fact that uh, whenever I'm here, you always announce before I preach that I have a degree from Harvard. <laughs> That never happens to me anywhere in the world except for here. <laughs> I think the fact that I have a degree from Harvard is pretty irrelevant as to whatever I have to say to you. I was I became a believer in Jesus after I graduated from Harvard. People ask me sometimes, "What was your major when you were at Harvard?" And I say, "Sin." <laughs> But I, 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 remind, I say that to tell you a, a story about the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I had God speak to me once before I was a believer in Jesus. 제가 예수님을 통해서 그 거듭나기 전에 하나님께서 제게 한번 말씀하신 것을 기억. Now that doesn't happen very often to people, but it happened one time to me. 자주 일어나는 것은 아니지만 한 번. No, this was two years before I was born again. 그 이전, 그가 믿기 이전 전에 그런 일이 일어났습니다. I was a heathen atheist. 아주 이별적인 그 무심한 것이. And I happened to be in line at Harvard on my graduation ceremony. 
I was wearing a cap and gown, standing in line to get my degree. My parents were in the audience. And as I was standing in line, I felt bad. I thought to myself that all my parents' money and all this time, I didn't learn anything while I was here. And even though I was an atheist, I just kind of had a moment, I looked up into the sky. And I had a moment of repentance. And I said, sort of God, even though I don't believe in God, if you're there. I said, I just want to say that I'm sorry that I've wasted all this time and wasted all my parents' money. And then I said to God, I said, there's only one thing I've learned here. Is it because I've studied with the most famous professors in the whole world? In philosophy and psychology and literature. And they didn't know anything about the meaning of life. I said, I've only learned one thing here. And that is for the rest of my life. I will never think that just because someone has a degree or a fancy title that he necessarily knows anything about life. And when I said that, I heard a voice speak to me on the inside. I didn't know what it was. It was only years later when I came to faith that I realized that was God talking to me. And the voice said to me, He said, For the plan that I have for your life, He said, That one lesson was worth all the money and all the time for you to learn that one thing. You know, the calling on my life primarily is to be an evangelist in Israel. It's to be an, I'm an evangelist in Israel. And when we're there, when we evangelize, we come up against the rabbis. The, the rabbis come against us with all their arguments. And there's many rabbinic and academic arguments that come against the faith. Very complex questions. You know, for instance, that in the Old Testament, when it said that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, in the original Hebrew text, it doesn't say virgin. What do you say to that when a rabbi challenges you on that? Well, that's a different lesson. I'm not going to talk about that today. But I'm saying to deal with them, I'd have to study a lot. I've had to study all the, the Hebrew linguistics and the rabbinic arguments and know how to answer all these questions. And because of that calling, I have to study a lot. I have to study a lot all the time to be able to, read, to answer those questions. 
But I know in that time that the answer is never in my own intellect. The, the answer has to be in the wisdom of God. No matter how smart you are, you have, before you make a decision, before you make a decision, you have to wait and listen to the Holy Spirit. You have to receive understanding from God. Sometimes it just takes a moment. Just turn to God and listen to Him. Remember the time that the rabbis came to Jesus? And they had a woman who had been caught in adultery. And they said, what do you think we should do with her? Moses said, we have to stone her. What do you say? Now, what's the problem? They had laid a trap for him. It's obvious this woman was repenting. If he said, if he said to stone her, then he was merciless. By the way, we know that she was repenting. We know that she was repenting. And we know that what they said was just a trap. Because they only brought the woman there. You know, it's hard for a woman to commit adultery by herself. If it had been an honest question, they would have brought the man with him. He probably deserved to get stoned. But she was repentant and they brought her there. So they, so they were saying to her, if you say to stone her, then you're cruel. If you say not to stone her, then you're breaking the law of Moses. Whatever you do, we've got you. And what did Jesus do? He didn't just answer right away. This was a confusing moment. Even for Jesus. Even for Jesus. This was a difficult question. And he just knelt down on the ground and he started to write with his finger. Now you know what he was writing? Do you know what he was writing? He was, he was writing the Bible verses that had to do with stoning the woman. He was copying out, the, he was writing on the ground the verse from Leviticus that says that you, that, that person should be stoned who commits adultery. In other words, when you get in a confusing situation, you don't know what to say, you just go back to the Bible and read it over him. And as he copied out that verse, he noticed that it said, the man that is caught in adultery should be to be stoned. And the woman along with him. And from the verse, the man has more of the responsibility. 
That's the way I also think that he wrote that with his finger. Because I believe it was the finger of Jesus that wrote the Ten Commandments. But anyway, so, so he stopped for a moment. And he's just praying there. He went back to the scriptures. He said, God, what, what are you saying here? And the Lord just showed him that the law is to stop sin. The law is there to stop sin. It's not there to condemn someone who's repented. And then God showed him that those other people that had brought her there were just as guilty as she was. So we received wisdom from God. And he turned to the sin and said, Who is with who of you is without sin, you throw the first stone. Because the Bible said that the, an honest witness would have to throw the first stone. And he realized there were no honest witnesses there. All right, now turn with me to Luke 4. I want to talk to you about us living and operating in the anointing power of God. Verse 16. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and we found it. He opened the book, and we found the place where it was written. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty of the captives, and recovery of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now, in some versions of the translations of the New Testament, they don't have the word to heal the brokenhearted there. If you don't have that, then your translation is wrong. It should say in there to heal the brokenhearted. It doesn't. I'm saying it's wrong. <laughs> Because he's, he's, he's quoting from Isaiah 61. And in the quote in Isaiah 61, in the Hebrew it says, which means to heal the brokenhearted. So if that's not there in your translation, in verse 18, you need to add in the words to heal the brokenhearted. Now Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted. Now that word when He said, the Lord has anointed me, that's the word where, where we get the word Christ or Messiah. You know, in many ways, I don't think people should call Jesus Jesus Christ. It might be better to say Jesus the Anointed One. 
Or Jesus, the anointed king. Because the word Christ is not his last name. Anybody know what Jesus' last name was? It was Ben Yosef. But anyhow, but Christ is not his last name. It means the anointed one. Jesus came here and said, I am the anointed one. I am the Christ, the Messiah. And what did that mean? Well, among other things, it meant that God had put His Spirit upon me. Jesus is saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And His anointing is upon me to preach the gospel and, and to heal. And so he, said, so he said, I come with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was the anointed one. The Christ, the anointed one. Because he came to bring us the Holy Spirit. He came to bring us the anointing. He is the Christ. He is the anointed one. And he comes to make us Christians. Meaning he's coming to make us anointed ones. With the same anointing that he had. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I have an anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I come to bring that upon you. That you will become anointed ones. That you will receive the Holy Spirit. And then you will go up the same way that I go out. And then you can also say, because I'm a Christian, because I've received the Holy Spirit, then I can say just like Isaiah did. I can say just like Jesus did. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel and to heal the broken hearted. So just as Jesus trusted in the work of the Holy Spirit coming through Him, we do the same thing and trust the anointing of the Holy Spirit coming through us. And, and, so, and so this is what Jesus was saying. Now everywhere Jesus went, this is what He would do. He would go into the synagogue. He would find Isaiah 61. He would open it up. And he would say, this is being fulfilled now. Right now, this is happening. Then he'd go to another town. And he'd open it up again to Isaiah 61. And he said, here now, the power of the Holy Spirit is for you here right now. Now let me show you one more thing here and we'll close on this. Jesus is preaching here in, this, in the town of Nazareth. He grew up in Nazareth. And when he preached there, 
Because the people were all his neighbors. Oh, he, he couldn't be the Messiah. Who does he think he is here? Now this Jesus was the Messiah. He had the Holy Spirit. He had the anointing. He had the power to heal. Do you know how many people got healed in Nazareth? Zero. None. In fact, not only did nobody get healed, they tried to kill him. Verse 30. And so then passing through the midst of them, he went on his way. Here we have the Almighty Son of God telling them that the power of the Holy Spirit is available for them. But no one got healed because they were not ready to receive it. The question here is not whether God has power. The question is whether we're ready to receive it. So we went out from Nazareth and he went down to Capernaum and he began to preach there. Did the same thing, took out Isaiah 61, read the same passage, said, I'm here. Now in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is in Nazareth. No one gets healed. Luke chapter 5, he goes down to Capernaum, verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching there, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now here you had all these religious experts. And how many people in Capernaum got healed? How many? One. One. None of the religious leaders did. But there was one man who was not a leader who was paralyzed and he broke through and Jesus said, you are healed. He said, he said, take up your bed and walk. And in this place, one person was healed. Nazareth, no one got healed. Capernaum, one person got healed. The reasons why they didn't get healed in Nazareth because they were all his friends. You know, who, was the, who does Jesus think he is? This is just a carpenter's son. That's why they didn't get healed. Because of familiarity. But in chapter 5, the religious leaders didn't get healed because of intellectual pride. Are you trying to tell us there's something here about the prophet Isaiah that we don't know? Why, well, I've studied that passage all my life. In fact, I could quote it to you. But Jesus said, no, it's being fulfilled now. The power is here now. But because of their intellectual pride, they couldn't receive it. 
In Nazareth, they couldn't receive it because they were familiar with him. In Capernaum, they couldn't receive it because of their pride. Now, those are two main reasons why we don't receive the power of God. Either we're too familiar with it. Oh, I go to church all the time. You know, I, nothing happens there. <sighs> church! <laughs> you know, you get too familiar with it. Oh, sure, yeah, I, I believe in Jesus. Somebody says, oh, sure, I believe in Jesus. Listen, I remember when I came to faith in Jesus. When I came to faith in Jesus as a Jew, as an atheist Jew, I was so excited, I ran out in the streets and grabbed people and said, do you know that Jesus loves you? And some people would say, oh, sure, I grew up in church. We can be so familiar with Jesus that we lose the excitement of power. Or we can miss it because of intellectual pride. Just what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> just, what, just what are you trying to tell me? Why, I study the Bible all the time. Are you trying to tell me I don't have any power? You trying to tell me something is missing in my life? I don't, I don't have enough of the Holy Spirit. So intellectual pride is the other reason. Either, either familiarity or intellectual pride will not let us receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So in Luke chapter 4, no one got healed. In Luke chapter 5, one person got healed. But in Luke chapter 6, verse 19, he said in the, verse 19, it's 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for the power went out from him, and he healed them all. So here he is in Tyre and Sidon, on the coast. Nazareth, no one got healed. Capernaum, one person got healed. And along the coast, everybody got healed. In Nazareth, they were familiar. In Capernaum, they had pride. But on the coast of Tyre and Sidon, it said they sought to touch him. They wanted it. They were looking for it. Same Jesus. Same Holy Spirit. Same anointing. Same power. Probably had read the same verse of Scripture. Same message even. One place no one gets healed. One, person, one place one person gets healed. Another place everyone gets healed. One place they had familiarity. One place they had pride. And one place they sought to get attention. 
They wanted the power. They sought the power. They were ready to receive. They drew it out of him. And they, they pulled the power out of him. Now I need to go check on this young lady. I don't know what happened. Is that young lady that I prayed for right before we came in here? Well, we were coming in here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> Can you move your leg at all? Okay, you can come up. Can you come up here? I see your leg is still hurting a little bit. We'll pray again. Just tell them what happened. Don't be nervous. Korean? No, 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 I'm Japanese. Oh, so you have to translate for me. Do you speak Korean? No. Okay. Okay. She started to pray with me. 
그런데 그 일본에서 온 자매 여기 같이 온 자매가 어, 기도하기 시작을 했고요. Yeah, and right after that, uh, the pastor Keith uh, walked up, walked by us. 어, 그러고 있는데 그때 우리 이스라엘 목사님 옆으로 지나가 계셔서. Yeah, and I didn't expect, but he started to pray for me. 아, 어, 목사님 기도해 주시라고 생각도 안 했는데 옆에 서 계시는 분이 목사님. 기도해 달라고 그래서 그때 기도를 시작했습니다. Yeah. And the first time I was so surprised. 저는 아주 큰 놀래가 있고요. And then embarrassed. <웃음> 또 어. <웃음> Because many people are walking. 예. 사람들이 많이 지나고 다니는데 이렇게 기도를 받 받을 때니까 어 뭐라고 그러지? 당황하다든지 좀 어쩌는 그런 상황. 네, 그 지금 그 지하로 내려가는 그 계단에 이렇게 지금 앉아가지고 다리를 이렇게. 네. I tried to stand up, but I couldn't move my leg. 일어서려고 해도 도저히 그 일어설 수 없고 그래서 가만히 거기 앉아. It's so painful. 네, 굉장히 <웃음> 통증이 있어. 잠자는 분이 많아서 종종. 통증. <웃음> 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 Pastor started to play for me, and then I don't know. The tears is coming from my heart and my eyes. 목사님 기도 시작할 때 이렇게 눈에서 갑자기 눈물도 나오지 않고 마음으로부터 이렇게 눈물을 흘렸다고 합니다. And I decided just just to follow, just leave my heart to God. Just believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus, and the Lord helped me out here. And Jesus helped me out here. Yeah, I just prayed, Lord, just just help me. This is the only thing I could say. Jesus, you so do it, so you can, you know, so what that woman wants to do is just to say. There's some different voice. I heard some different voice said. Hey, stop! Just you have this little little face, and it doesn't work anyway. Ah, but also one side, if you have a little bit of pain, or if you have a little bit of pain, or if you have a little bit of pain, or if you have a little bit of pain, or if you have a little bit of pain, or God help me. I just pray. Yeah. 그러나 그 다른 목소리를 막 무시하고 하나님 말씀을 들으러 가겠다. 결단을 하고 나섰다. And then I felt some kind of I don't know the power. The pain is just just going, just going out of my body. And I got that peace in my heart. 그래 그 통증이 점점 사라지고 마음의 편안을 누리기 시작을 했다고 합니다. I mean, now, you know, I was so surprised and I praised the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can walk right now. And then, you know, just before the pastor called me when I was sitting there, I still hurt my leg. Yeah, but. See? Yes, now I'm going to tell you that 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 But Lord, we just thank you that you're still God today. Lord, and I just thank you that this young lady that was lying on the floor, unable to move, crying, with just one word from you, Lord, 
that she said the power of God went into her and that the pain went out and we thank you Lord that the same Holy Spirit that was on Jesus is with us here today we thank you for that God in Jesus' name.